everybody. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing really good. Boy, what a nice day today. We're in the Jeep here. I'm just coming back from a little guitar safari. Uh, got one of those. There's a guitar stand over there and an amplifier. I get into this really, really right, so I think we're going to do okay. Let's take a look, see what we got. Okay, folks, what we got here is an Ibanez Geo, really inexpensive uh, Ibanez guitar. Uh, this one's just kind of dusty and dirty. This is how you usually find them. Uh, you know, I didn't pay a ton for this, so it's all good. Uh, it's got a really nice feeling neck on it, I must say. And it's got some sort of whatever that is on there. So that's the first thing we're going to do is wipe it down and see if we can clean this stuff off it. It doesn't appear to be many, if any, scratches. It just looks like it was kind of just neglected. So let's see what we can do with it. Okay, so it looks like, I don't know, maybe beer was spilled on it or something. Who knows? Uh, you know, again, like I said, this is how a lot of them, you find a lot of them out in the wild. They just... Usually a guitar that somebody bought and they had good intentions of playing and, uh, you know, they just never get around to it and the stuff just kind of collects dust and uh, there you have it. Uh, really nice guy that I bought this from. Uh, it was nice talking with him. And uh, to my bass player buddies out there, he's got a few basses for sale and a nice hot key bass amp really good buys if anyone's interested let me know one of the bases was an esp four string i can't remember what the other one was it was a five string inexpensive maybe a rogue or something like that i can't really remember but uh they were both in decent shape you know and uh, he also had a hard shell case for a base as well so just throwing that out there and you guys want a base you know any of my buddies locally i can uh, turn you on to it he'd probably do a little better on the price too uh you know he said it wasn't that big a deal but uh so anyway look at that folks just like new oh you gotta love that uh honestly there's there's no scratches there's no buckle rash there's nothing I can tell just that quick how much this guitar has been played. Uh, it wasn't like stored in a case, so we know it wasn't like meticulously cared for, but there you go. Still cleaned right up, just like brand new. All right, let's flip her over and see what we can do to the front. Okay, well, the front isn't so bad as the uh, the back. It doesn't look like anything got spilled on it does have one little kind of a weird thing happening at the seam here. Not a big deal, just a finish flaw by the looks of it. Could be even from the factory, I'm not really sure, but... So, yeah, Ibanez Geo. They're really inexpensive, but really the only bad thing about this that I've noticed just right off at a quick glance, it's got the cheap tuners on it. Now... I guarantee I can make this thing play like a, a nice uh, a nice guitar that costs way more than this does. It's just it just needs to be set up. You know that's usually the deal with these. The parts are all basically the same. You know I know they probably put cheaper pickups and stuff like that in them, but who cares? I mean, you can find these out in the wild for. You know, under a hundred bucks sometimes, so it's just a good uh, guitar to buy just for parts, or if you just want a beater, or you're just starting out. Uh, honestly, for the money, I think I would, if it was me and I was just starting out, I think I would probably lean towards this. Because it's, you know, it's every bit as good as a Squire, maybe better. Honestly, like the fret ends feel good on this, and I know it's never been 
treated or anything like that. So there you have it. Another nice uh, new light finish. Amazingly, guys, check this out. I can't even really see any scratches on the pit guard. Nothing. Uh, this one was a closet queen. Like I said, it probably wasn't in a case, but, you know, there's no scratches on it. It's in basically like new condition. When I get done cleaning this thing up, uh, without a doubt, it's going to be uh, just like new. So that's great. We'll, uh, we'll oil the fretboard. I probably will just take a fret eraser and clean the frets up, do a, a nice setup on this. And this will make somebody a great guitar. Five-way switch, volume tone. Another nice feature I like about these is the uh, input jack is down here instead of up in the front of the body. Uh, I kind of like that personally. And, you know, it's, it's a full thickness body, okay? You go buy a Squire Affinity, they're not a full thickness body. I'm just saying. Uh... Honestly, I like I said, I know the uh, you know the pots don't feel cheap and cheesy. The switch feels good. You know, it's basically got the fender trim set up, and it's HSS too, which is cool. Uh, you know, like I said, bang for your for your buck. I think this is probably a better guitar than like an Affinity Squire. Uh, at least you know from what I'm seeing here. I've never owned one of these, but. Uh, I'm going to show you what the tuners look like because I run into this all the time. That's what they look like, okay? Now, there are ways to fix these. These do feel kind of cheesy, and that's because they are cheesy. But I did a video on how to, how to fix these and tighten them up. So what you do is you take, uh, take these two screws out, and this cover comes off the back. And you're able to tighten up the gear with a screwdriver. And you can also take a pair of plies and crimp the uh, the, the uh, thing that holds the uh, post in here. And that tightens them right up. You put the cover back on and uh, you're good to go. So, you know, check that out in my uh, uh, playlist on my channel, guys. I've got everything broke up into... Uh, Guitar demos, uh, you know, guitar repairs, gear repairs, amp demos. Uh, it's all there. So I put it into playlists just that way it'd be easier for you guys to find it. And uh, I, I will maybe even possibly do a video on doing that uh, procedure again when I get ready to string this back up. So, oh no, like I said, I mean, this does not even have a scratch. They're out there, folks. You just gotta, you gotta go track them down. And, you know, like I said, I knew it was an inexpensive guitar going in. That's why I didn't pay a whole lot for it. And the guy wasn't asking a lot. I gave him what he paid. I mean, I paid him what he was asking. So, uh, it all ended well. And, uh, he actually told me he had another, uh, acoustic guitar that a friend of his had kind of left at his place and, and had passed away recently or like a year ago and uh he's gonna dig it out and you know and uh send me a picture and a text message when he does find it and uh he told me i could have it he said it needed a little tlc but it was probably a three or four hundred dollar acoustic and he's gonna give it to me so you know it was worth the trip i mean i had to drive a boat you know, 25 minutes to go get this and come back. It was not a big deal, but uh, in any case, I think I did okay. I haven't plugged it in or anything yet. I know it's it's a Strat with a humbucker, basically. Uh, you know, it shouldn't be any big surprises here with it, but, you know, here you go. Ibanez doesn't put Squire or Epiphone or anything on their guitars. Every one of them, even the cheap ones, say Ibanez. I do like that about the company, honestly. And, you know, this is a Chinese-made uh, model, but it's in good shape. And, uh, like I said, it feels pretty decent, you know, compared to, you know, back in the 80s when Squires first come out, they weren't that great. 
some of them some of them were but especially the the japanese built ones um and you know like i said the now that we have CNC machines and stuff, the tolerances are so tight on on these, and that's how they're making them. So it's really uh, well made, if if I must say. You know, it's it's the same process they're using to make pretty much every other guitar. Okay, so they're just putting some inferior parts on it. Maybe the tuners. I know the pickups are probably bi magnet. That's okay, too, because, honestly, some of these cheaper pickups are hotter than, you know, the, the Al Nico magnet pickups. Now, I don't know what's in this. I haven't taken it apart or anything yet, but uh, I'm just going to go through and uh, finish cleaning it all up nice and uh, should be good to go. Let's take a look at the amp. Okay, so this was part of the deal. I don't know what this is. It's a guitar amplifier with a tremolo. Nice. I don't know what this is. There's no name on it. Let me look on the handle. Nope. Nothing on the handle. And I just want to look at the power cord here real quick. It's a two-prong cord. And what does that mean? Well, that means it's not very new. Uh, this must be an older amplifier. Uh... It's not tube, it's just solid state. At least that's what he told me. Looks like a homemade back on the cabinet. It's kind of loose. Uh, you know, this is no dumble by any means, guys, but uh, it's got one speaker in it and the trim, you know, this is, this is something you want to think about, okay? So if the amp's just completely no good or whatever if the cabinets totaled uh what have you uh guess what that circuit's still in there and you can make a pedal out of that circuit okay so that's something to keep in mind let's measure the speaker real quick here and just see what we're looking at uh five inch i guess something like that so there you have it, folks. Oh, yeah, and I got an on-stage, you know, brand guitar stand with it, too, as well. So I'm going to clean the amp up. I'm going to turn it on for us. So let's see if it even powers on. The guy said it did work, but uh, I don't really even know where the power switch is. Let's, uh, nope, nothing in the back. Uh, Oh, here we go. Okay, so it's on the tone knob. You can hear the tremolo working. Right? Okay, so the on-off switch is right on the tone. And you can hear it bleeding the caps off. Okay, so it works. No uh, indicator light or anything, but... If you guys know what this is, please leave it in the comments and uh, help me out if you would. I'd like to just know what it is. Like I said, I know it's not a dumble, but I know it's not brand new either. This isn't. Uh, this has got to be. A, it's got to have a little age to it here, just like I said, because of this. Usually they put a three prong cord on these, but you never know. So again, if you guys know anything about it. Uh, drop a comment in the uh, down below in the comment section. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, I'll do a sound test on both of them here real soon. Uh, I'm going to finish cleaning up the uh, guitar itself. And also uh, probably put a new set of strings on it. Not 100% sure what I'm going to do to this, but uh, I do with it. This is good bargaining power and just good trading power, if anything, too. Uh, you know, there's always someone looking for a starter guitar. Uh, I, I guarantee I could change the tuners on this and do a good setup on it, and you could probably play gigs with this. There's no probably about it. I know you could. Uh, it's just what it is. If you, you know, some people would be ashamed to stand on stage with that. It doesn't bother me a bit. I don't care what it says on the headstock and, uh, 
you know, the uh, amplifier doesn't seem to mind either. So thanks again for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned. We'll do a, do a nice sound demo on this coming right up. Okie doke. See you guys later. Be good.